it's a good happy day because today another one of the animals here at Red Ribbon Reptiles is getting the heck out of a Sterilite tub into a nice beautiful enclosure. That animal just so happens to be Miss Looney Tune herself, Petunia, our Plains Hognose Snake. She's a snow morph, so she's a xanthic and albino, resulting in this beautiful pink and white snake that also, as you can see, has uh, brown speckling because she is a burrower and likes to spend time in the dirt. So as pretty as she is, she's never clean, but that's okay, Petunia, you don't have to be clean, okay? We're gonna get you into this new house and you get as dirty as you want, all right? Well, as you can see, the enclosure is ready, but uh, it didn't start that way. We got another one of these awesome reptile habitats enclosures from Dubia.com, and I uh, highly, highly recommend them. We pieced it together to customize it. We cut these two inch thick pieces of foam as we, as we like to do, and we glued them in place onto the background along with a couple of chunks of spider wood too. Then to get the rest of the background into place so these rocks weren't hanging off nothing, we used pond and stone, I believe, spray foam. It comes out black, saves us a lot of time. We used to use the regular stuff and we had to paint over it black, but uh, this killed two birds with one stone. And once that dried, we painted some Gorilla Glue right on there and dumped some broken up coconut core with a little bit of peat moss blended in there too to create this uh, dirty, dirty, dirty cave kind of background, I don't know. And then me from the past around a half hour ago is gonna lead you through the rest of this build and we'll meet you back here to put Petunia in her enclosure. Okay, so our box is complete, and though it, it may be a fancy box right now, it's only a box until we get the substrate, the decor, everything Little Miss Petunia needs for it. And I wanna mention, I do have a heat mat mounted uh, underneath, hooked up to a thermostat here, but the heat mat's too small. It was the heat mat that she had on her Sterilite tub. We're gonna get a length of THG heat tape to take up this whole third. Plains hognose snakes, even ranging like up into Minnesota and stuff, she's definitely not gonna get cold because it's nice and warm in this room, plus a little bit of heat there for her if she really needs it. So we're gonna get to our substrate we have mixed up here. Coconut core, play sand, cypress mulch, and a little bit of peat moss. And this is gonna be the base of the substrate, but I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do something a little fancy. Here and I'll kind of explain what I'm talking about, but uh, first we gotta, we gotta dump this in. So guys, as you can see, first of all, I got some of the substrate left over, but I really love this blend for almost all of my reptiles. Some of, you know, my Euromastics is on sand and things like that, but this is a really good blend. Uh, it feels almost like real dirt, you'll find out there. But you can see, I, uh, I filled it up, but now I'm pushing all this towards the back. And there's a couple reasons for this. First of all, hognose snakes are a burrowing species, so I want to make sure she has at least some areas where she can completely disappear and be hidden under that dirt. But secondly is uh, the design I'm kind of going for. Hognose snakes, at least in the United States, are going to be eating a lot of amphibians in the wild. And I heard, shout out to Dave Kaufman, found some hognose snakes in the wild and, and made a video on how to care for them. Check that out. But hognose snakes do this really cool thing. Well, the, they'll even go to the edge of a pond and dangle themselves off cattails and pick little amphibians right out of the water. So part of the design idea here to have these in the back are almost these pieces of spider wood are going to act almost like roots coming out of like a water's edge with these rocks too, kind of doing the same thing. And we're gonna put some sand here and it's it's dual purpose, okay? So it, it might look nice. I mean, I'm not gonna toot my own horn yet before we've even done it. But also it's another, it's a secondary texture in the enclosure for Petunia to burrow through, dig through. Hopefully she's gonna have a good time with that and it'll add some enrichment to the enclosure. Got our substrate in there. I kind of like how it came out. Uh, Petunia will do a good job of blending this all together to her own liking once she's in here. But substrate next decor. Okay, we got we got the classics. We got rocks. We got cork. Nice hide for Petunia. We got some hydrated sphagnum moss to help create a little humid area in there and probably sprinkle a little bit around for decoration's sake. Got a nice artificial fern, artificial flowers. We got petunias on the way from Amazon. Don't worry, don't worry about that. 
and a little bit of ivy here too. And guys, get your artificial plants from like a dollar store or a craft store. You're going to save money because uh, reptile fake plants are pretty expensive. So it's time to get this decor all set up. And uh, soon enough, Petunia's moving in. So here we go. <laughs> There you have it, a beautiful enclosure for our beautiful little lady. I'm not gonna feed her tonight, but me from the future this time is going to bring you along to feed Petunia tomorrow once she's settled in in her nice new home. Okay, Petunia, what do you say? You ready You ready to go try it out? You wanna try it out? Okay, Petunia, a new toy for you, a new house. Let's see what you think. Classic Petunia. Okay, let's not dig right there. Though. Let's dig, let's dig in. Where people can see you, Petunia. You're a star. Look at this, so much bigger than your last house. Why do you keep going in the corner? <laughs> Why do you keep going in the one corner? Nice hat. Nice hat, Petunia. Looking good. Petunia second day in this beautiful little home. Look at it. Okay, so as you can see, Petunia had a fun day at the beach. Look, I told you she was going to redecorate to her liking, and she certainly has. But we got a lot of sand here now in these tracks. I was trying to keep that sand lower. Didn't matter to Petunia. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum these tracks out, and then we'll get you your mouse, and you can enjoy a meal. How's that? Okay, we got a little mouse right here for Petunia to christen her new home. I make, I'm going to make sure it's nice and dry because I don't want it to pick up too much of the substrate. All these substrates that are mixed in here are relatively safe. I mean, even if she ends up getting a little bit stuck on the mouse and goes to eat it, I don't think she'll have any problems digesting. Miss Petunia even enjoying some climbing opportunity. It's only a 12 foot high enclosure, but certainly not an arboreal snake. I mean, I'm sure they'll climb what they can. And that's why I think that this enclosure is perfect for her. There are some things set up there, but she's not going to have to struggle or worry about falling from a, a higher point. So 
I'm really happy that it came out, and I think Petunia is going to be very happy in the long run, too. And not only am I happy that it came out pretty well, but always so happy to get my animals out of smaller enclosures into bigger, more naturalistic setups. So hopefully they can express some more natural behaviors, because that's what we're all about here, right, Petunia? Let us know what you think about the setup in the comments below. And make sure if you enjoyed today's video that you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. It means a whole lot. New episodes of the Primates with Reptiles podcast every Sunday right here on this channel. And more traditional videos every Thursday. But for now, I am Raph the Hominid. This is Petunia the Plains Hognose Snake. And this is her enclosure. You've been watching Red Ribbon Reptiles and we'll see you next time.